beautiful Sagittarian friends and welcome to your horoscope for September of 2020. We're this month Sagittarius. It's nice because I see so many positive opportunities for love on your table and I'm not talking romance. There could definitely be some romance that presents itself but this is a month where I feel like the idea of love, true love, what you're truly passionate about, something that kind of makes Sagittarius sing, whatever that is for you, there's definitely an abundance of energy on the table and available for you. Now Mars is also going to take his retrograde this month and this is going to whip through that fifth house which is a house of love. It's a house of self-expression. It's a house of joy of taking risks and as Mars is retrograde in this particular area one of the things that you could find is that you are going back to something you loved and you're looking at bringing it into your life are you looking at going back to a project that maybe you started at a time and it didn't really kick off and now you want to go back to it are you learning something whatever it is it's kind of a courageous brave move that you're going to use this Mars Mars retrograde to go back to for sure. But the good news is too, he's retrograding in a fellow fire energy. So that is definitely good news. Now this month, we've got the autumn equinox gifts that are up and those appointments will book between September and December. Of course, they are first come first serve, but jump in the description box down below. Take advantage if you're ready for a check-in or a session or whatever that looks like. The eat and greets are also really great this month. We've got fellow YouTuber Athen Chimenti coming over where we're going to talk about not just sidereal astrology, but true sidereal astrology. I got a whole little education in that. So if you haven't heard of it or you don't study it yet, make sure you show up for that eat and greet. It will be great. But Katarnas is here to welcome us into this full moon. Achuta Bhava will be here. Uh, Michael A. Bryan will be here. Gary Caton's coming back to get us ready for Mercury retrograde. So lots of good stuff happening happening this month. Make sure that you do not miss it and I'll make sure that I put the postings up in the community tab so you can check it out as well. All right, Sagittarius, let's jump into this month and see what's going on. Right at the beginning of the month on the second, we see the full moon happening in the energy of Pisces. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So there's a shift that is required here. And that full moon is shedding a whole bunch of light, right? So it's just showing you in, in massive light, favor things that you couldn't see, even if they were just right here, but you just couldn't see them. It sheds that beautiful kind of light on it. Now, Pisces energy here is going to light up your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property, your roots, um, maybe even something from the past. But the question that's being asked here in this home zone for you truly is where are you needing to be of um, more service? And you'll know because it almost feels a little bit like I'm suffering in this area. So this is where I say, where are you suffering? Because you need to be of a different kind of service to this area of your life. Where do you need to surrender to win here, right? Where can you stop pushing and pushing and pushing in this direction in order to actually surrender? And then you can win by getting to move forward. You get to make that transition. Pisces energy wants to transition things. It wants to allow things to come to a completion so that it can be and it can birth what needs to happen next. So I would ask you in your fourth house zone, where do you need to surrender to win? Are you trying to get this new place to live, some place to call home? And it's like you're pushing and pushing and pushing. And now it's getting ready with this full moon to come to a culmination where if you just surrender, you can definitely make this transition to home, whatever you call home, easier. I am seeing two here. Okay, so with this full moon in place, after the ninth of the month, which is where Mars is going to go retrograde, I do want to tell you, Sagittarians, it's not the best idea to make any really big um, home or really big um, property investments for like a family member. Or something like that. So if you have a parent who is thinking of making this really big investment, maybe caution them to, if not to do it, but maybe to really have a lot of eyes on it. But for some reason, I'm being shown that your parent is trying to make a financial decision or investment and it's not 
the best thing to do. So however that plays out and whoever that's for, please let me know in the comment section down below. On the 5th, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Libra, lighting up your 11th house space. So this brings a lot of Venetian energy meeting Mercury, and they really like each other. This is a talent, a beauty for communicating. In the 11th house space, this is the social things. Social media, friends, um, organizations maybe that you are a part of. If you had a presentation to do virtually, this would bless that area for sure. The other thing I think about in this 11th house zone though is long range plans and goals and designs. You have got the gift of an open, beautiful mind here to craft your future. What's important to you? You just had a full moon in the fourth house. Where do you call home? What's home for you? And now how do you plan that and lay that into your long range plan? going forward. Even if these happen to be things that are international, how do you bridge the gap between um, being over here and being more in an international or kind of foreign space, something like that? This energy will definitely help you to do that. Mercury in Libra also is quite good for relationships. So if you've got relationship conversations or you're just enjoying the relationship dynamics, definitely have those conversations under Libra, okay? In the sixth, we're going to see Venus moving into the energy of Leo. Now, this is going to light up your ninth house space. Venus, wherever she goes, she's trying to bring some benefit. She's bringing a magnetism to pull things to you. In the energy of Leo, it is this is important to you. This is your special sauce. This makes you feel creative. This brings you joy. This is your step out that's out there. But it's in the ninth house. So publishing, marketing, broadcasting, expansion faith, beliefs, right? We are guided by the things that we believe and sometimes they're not the best things or sometimes they're beliefs that we've outgrown or something like that. So Venus here could definitely be ushering you in some different thoughts and it's like, well, here's what I believe about this particular thing, right? You're really owning that. The other thing I think of is because the ninth house is an expanded house, is this bringing you a new teacher who is maybe foreign from you? right? They don't live where you live. Well, we've got the internet now. So are you studying with that teacher in Japan and you've always wanted to study? Is this that place where you went back to a project or something that you call home you're going back to and there is a lot of magnetism and love and joy and welcoming as you move back towards it? Venus is also really phenomenal for trying to bring some romance, some true love to the table. So true love of a project, true love of uh, a faith, true love of some beliefs. This could definitely be lovely for putting out your book or your written work as well. Uh, when we get to the ninth, we see Mars being in retrograde in the energy of Aries. So he's home, he's in domicile, so he's very, very comfortable. This lights up your fifth house space. Now Aries, Mars is going to take this retrograde in Aries between 28 degrees and 15 degrees so that you can map that out on your chart, okay? As Mars is in this retrograde, we say that if you can avoid having surgery or doing anything like that during a Mars retrograde, it's really better. Mars is the energy that's over war and surgery is war. We consider the cutting of that to be war. So if it doesn't align with your chart, you know, if you can postpone any elective surgeries or things like that, that would be best. But you do what you need to do. But ultimately, this Mars energy here in the fifth house may be slowing your actions down. You know, Mars is our human doing. So we're doing, we're moving, we have a desire for things with our Mars energy. So this in Aries is your desire about your identity, your desire about your body, your identity um, connected to what you do in the world. Now this does light up the fifth house space, which is again, it's joy, it's play, it's where we conceive things. We conceive children, we see them here. We conceive business ideas. We, we conceive um, how we're gonna share our special expressions. We do all of that here in this fifth house energy. So as Mars is retrograde here, I think that one, you are slowed down enough to go back retrograde to something you were working on before. Reconnect with the kids, reconnect with your joy, reconnect with your desire, um, 
to do something with your identity and get ready to express it out later, especially as we come closer to 2021 and really build something out of that. I think that this is an interesting retrograde because it really asks us to face ourselves and be quite courageous in the actions that we're going to take here right? You may have been thinking, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how I would launch that out. I'm not finished with my education yet, so I can't possibly be teaching. You know, whatever it is, Mars retrograde here is going to take you back to some courage as well and say, we are warriors, Sagittarius. Let's get out here and show the world what we're made of. Let's get out here and be that expansive energy for the world and for people, right? So this Mars is quite aggressive in his retrograde fortune that's coming here. Now, one of the other things I will just tell you is if this does happen to be around children in your life or maybe you're connected to children somehow, Mars retrograde can really slow down direct action. So if you're watching kids be a little bit aimless under this energy, yeah, that is something we can definitely see. Try and encourage them to go back to things they know that bring that active passion up for them as well. You know, virtual schooling may not be the bee's knees for everybody, but let's remind these kids and let's remind ourselves of where we really find joy in the daily routines, okay? On the 13th, we see Jupiter coming out of retrograde in the energy of Capricorn at 18 degrees. And at the end of the month, we're going to see Saturn coming out of retrograde in Capricorn as well. As these big boys come out of retrograde in Capricorn, this is an energy that is just next door for you, right? It's just here in the second house. This is where you can start to see the blessings that doing the hard work is going to deliver now because as these planets are retrograde you're you're still being refined and Jupiter still granting the blessing but you can't see it it's like delayed it's like traffic jammed in your life and as these two come out of retrograde the things you've been working on from May until now you're going to start to see that those things can release it actually speaks very well for you being mature being smart and having strong earning capacity in this second house area of your life. So I absolutely love that for you. On the 17th, we're going to have a new moon happening in the energy of Virgo. This is going to light up that tip top of your chart. So now we've had a moon that's down in the bottom at home revealing something to us saying we need to shift end or transition this particular area. Now we've got a moon saying let's start something new in what we're showing up as in the world. This could be directly related to your career. Venus is up top in the energy of Leo. This could be a promotion for sure coming with this new moon. But ultimately what I would love for you to do is plant your seeds of intention. This is the darkest phase of the moon, so anything could happen here. But Virgo is analytical in your career, in what you want to do, in where you want to live, in what we know you as on this planet, Sagittarius. Be strategic about it. Look into the details of how you're going to get that done. What's your step-by-step plan, which trust me, Virgo is laying out that step-by-step plan to get you to your goals. So allow this Virgo energy to guide you, but also remember that if you're going to try and move something forward, the question is, how is this of service to you and to this world through the lens of the 10th house, okay? On the 22nd, we see the sun now coming into the energy of Libra, lighting up the 11th house space along with Mercury. So light, heat, life, vitality, it's busy. It is a busy 11th house for you. Maybe it's very virtual, but I think that this speaks beautifully well as well to you getting an expanded plan together like it's almost as if because venus is up in leo and the sun is over in libra this is called mutual reception so between your expansion house here in the ninth house and your friendship slash long range goal house here they're working together So this is benefit in your favor. It is motivation to get your long range plans and affairs in order. How are you going to expand out? Where are you traveling to? You're seeking this month home. So what is home for you? What's the joy that is Sagittarius? What are you doing that you're going to show up and give to us? Okay. 
On the 27th, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Scorpio. Now, this is going to be right behind you, so lighting up that 12th house space. Mercury in the 12th house, we want to have conversation about things from the past. We want to have conversations about our health, about our wellness, especially spiritually. Mercury here makes you a very good observer of your own patterns, right? Do you have patterns? Do you have behaviors? Do you have beliefs that have been showing up and they are not productive for you to go forward? Mercury will help you see those and Scorpio is going to dig down and get into them and say, what's behind this? Why do I keep saying, oh, it's never going to get any better? Or why do I keep saying this particular phrase, which is actually stopping us from moving forward? The other thing that Mercury does really well here in the 12th house is help you gather research and information. You've got maybe a project coming forward, or maybe even it's not a project. Maybe it's something you went back to, and now you need to research how to get that thing launched out. Well, you've got the sun in the 11th house. Go ask some questions right? Go allow yourself to expand and see how you can take that thing forward. If you're finishing finishing education, if you're moving, if you're whatever, you've got to gather information about where you're going to go next. And it doesn't mean you enact it. This is the 12th house. You're just gathering the information. I also think that Mercury and Scorpio is beautiful here for treating um, depression, making sure you're taking care of yourself, treating any illness that we can't outwardly see but that you know is there based on its effects. So Mercury here in Scorpio is wonderful for allowing you be guided in some kind of treatment and turning your mind towards getting to the depth and the heart of maybe what's going on in that particular area. So lovely spiritual energy is available when Mercury comes into that 12th house space for sure. As we close this month out on the 29th, Saturn comes out of retrograde. He'll be direct again there in the energy of Capricorn. So in your second house, so money and things that are of value. We've talked a lot about what is your identity that you're ready to share out to the world. What is home? Home for you this month, Sagittarius. So as Saturn comes out of retrograde and you are focused on value, on money, on your skills, on your talents that you have to give, Saturn is going to ask you, Sagittarius, did you learn? Have you crystallized and mastered what I've been trying to show you so that you can take this area of your life, your earnings to the next level? Did you get that training? Did you finish that education? Did you write that book? Are you giving that speech? Are you taking care of those kids that other Helps you in the value area moving forward into 2021 when we're going to switch and move into this Aquarian vibe. So it's a really big focal point I think is going to come back to this area, but also the blessings of the hard work that you've done. Saturn and Jupiter will both recognize at this time as well. So you can start to see them come in in little drops, you know, maybe a little bit more money, maybe you get a little passive income, something like that starts to show up on your doorstep. Sag, I think it's going to be quite the month. I think it's going to be busy for very many people, you included. Stay optimistic and beautiful like you are. But I would really love to hear down below, what are you working on? Where are you trying to expand out? And what is this thing for you, Sag? Whether it's a physical place or it's something in the heart that you call home because you seem to be trying to make your way back to it. All right, Saggies, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the Equinox appointments and I will see you in the Eat and Greets. Bye, Sedge.